What's up guys, Holland Nguyen here for OG Fitness and welcome to the channel. And if you're new to the channel, I'm 41 years old and all I talk about is fitness and martial arts, right? And for, uh, you know, for the older generation, right? Uh, former athletes or, you know, like uh, adults who are taking up martial arts at a later time in their life. And yeah, so welcome and uh, like the video, subscribe and click on the notification bell. Okay, so enough of that. All right, so in today's video, I wanna talk about how to adapt a combat sport slash, slash martial arts for self-defense for the streets, okay? So I'm just gonna choose judo because that's what I do. I, I'm, a, I'm a judoka and I've been doing this for about five years. I'm a brown belt. Prior to that, I did about six years of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And then before that, well, I've done like a lot. I touched on pretty much uh, a lot of martial arts, right? So I did Taekwondo when I was a kid for about three years, did Kung Fu for about two years, uh, trained in, uh, in Muay Thai, boxing, and, and even wrestling for about a year, each one, you know, kind of all at the same time, really, because, uh, well, it was available at the club where uh, I was training, right? So, but judo is my specialty. So how would I adapt judo uh, to, to self, for self-defense? Well, because I had this, uh, I was discussing this with a subscriber on, on, on YouTube, right? In the comments and all that. And he was telling me how, like, uh, you know, even, uh, cause I, I was, I was talking about BJJ and how, uh, sports BJJ is some of the stuff they do. You wouldn't be able to do it in the street. Well, that applies to pretty much, uh, any combat sports slash martial arts that, you know, they have competition and they have rules, you know? So in judo, of course, like if you're a martial artist, and you practice uh, your, your sport, your art, right? Things have to be adapted, right? Like for example, but just because uh, I compete and under, under rule sets, right? It doesn't mean that I don't understand how to adapt it, right? Like it's, it's common sense. And of course, if you take the time to think about it, you, you'll, you'll understand uh, what you can do in competition, right? And what you can't do like, uh, like on the street. For example, if you go for a Ipon Seonage, it's an arm throw. So, you, you know, you, you grab the arm, you come like that, you turn around, the guy's on your back, you know, like a school bag, and then you flip him, right? Now, a lot of times in competition, they, they drop to their knees when they do that. So they go like this, boom, they turn around and they drop right down to their knees, you know, to, to give it that extra uh, explosivity and to just like drop down so fast that the guy just, you know, woo, flips over, right? Now, of course, you wouldn't do that in the streets necessarily because you could hurt your knees. That's one thing, right? So, and anyways, like the classic way of doing it, right, uh, is to really just, let's say, your opponent's here and you have your, you're here. So let's say you grab him, you pull him towards you, right? So he's off balancing. And as you're pulling him towards you like this, you drop down. So you do a squat and then the guy tilts over like that. And you keep pulling, boom, right? So you just have to do a squat. That's all you have to do. You just have to get your hips lower than his. And then you can, uh, and by pulling, you off balance them and boom, then, there you go. So of course, that's how you would have to do it like in the street, right? But of course, practice does make permanent. So you, it's important to, to be able to do, uh, to adapt your things for competition, but also to be able to do it like, so it's actually applicable in the street. So that takes a little bit of, uh, of um, awareness regarding that. So if for anybody who's practicing a combat sport, well, you just have to take the time to think about it and uh, you, you'll figure it out, you know? So, and when you look at, um, when you look at the classic judo, right? All the techniques, they're very combat oriented, right? I mean, it is the art of the, like, like it comes from jujitsu, which is like the, the martial art of the samurai and judo, that's where it's, that's where it comes from, right? So a lot of the things there, uh, classic techniques and all that, but the thing is they have to be adapted. The techniques have to be adapted to work against another opponent who practices the exact same sport and to make it actually work in competition. So the classic techniques have to be adapted so they work in competition. So then you have to reverse this, right? So what you have to do is that you have to take the techniques that were adapted for competition and kind of uh, readapt them for the street. Right, so I think it's important to uh, 
um, that's why in judo, like when you go for your black belt, you have to uh, you have to gokyo to demonstrate. You have to demonstrate the kata, right? It's uh, it's two man kata, so you it's it's you demonstrating the technique, and it's your uh, your uh, your your partner who's coming towards you and attacking like this, like this, or whatever you know. And then you have to do it. So you have they they do that so that it conserves the essence, the true take the not the true techniques, but the original techniques where everything else was built on afterwards, right? So they do that, and then of course you have to demonstrate like all the uh, uh, techniques. You know, they call them out the gokyo. So like, okay, and they call out this technique, and you gotta do this choke and do that. And uh, so I'm not there yet. I still have to do that exam for to to be able to get my black belt. Uh, but uh, yeah, everything is uh, shut down at this point. So I'm gonna I'm just healing up now, taking care of my body, uh, increasing my cardio, you know, and my endurance, and. Um, yeah, so until until then, then I'll get back to it, right? But uh, the objective is, the first objective is the black belt. After that, competition. Compete, compete, compete. World title. That's what I'm going for. Okay, so uh, another thing that, like, um, how do you say it? Another thing that has to be adapted to is closing the distance, right? In, in judo, for example, you're not just going to stand there, like, with your chin out. And just walk and try and grab the guy because you'll probably get punched in the face, right? And knocked out <laughs> or kicked, you know, kicked in the head or, you know, so that's important too. But for you to be able to close the distance, you have to understand how to, um, well, the distance, right? Punching range, you have to understand the ranges, punching range, kicking range, right? You have to also be able to come in and not get knocked out because um, that's, that could happen, right? And you don't necessarily want to uh, uh, come close to a guy like without knowing if he has a weapon on him or not, right? Like the important thing is to look at somebody's hands in a, in a, in a street fight because if he's holding a weapon, right? Then like let's say he's holding a knife, you'd want to just jump in and grab him and you know like get stabbed while you know before he could even throw, right? So that being said, like how do you adapt judo to um, to actually be able to use your judo in a street fight? Well, definitely when you're in the clinch, you know, you already know what to do, right? Uh, now, the thing is, well, you have to have an understanding of striking, right? Because you have to be able to protect yourself and to close that distance and to strike. So that's one thing, right? And another thing is that you just have to take the time to think about it. And now I'm thinking right now because a lot of times I just think of the subject and I go. I just, I just film. It's like not even scripted, you know? Um, sometimes I'll write stuff down, but... Rarely do I do that, so just bear with me for a second here. Okay, now that being said, right, like if you, for example, know how to uh, to box, and that, that's why I think boxing is, is super important, right? Because you, you know how to protect your, your head, the most important part. Like if you get knocked here, you're, you're out, right? So you have to be able to close the distance, so you have to throw a couple of punches or whatnot, right? Just to be able to close that distance, George St. Pierre was amazing at this, closing the distance, but he was he was using wrestling though, you know? Like he would just, uh, you know, set up, set up, set up, boom, 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 and then boom, go in for the takedown. So you'd have to be able to do that, but, uh, you know, if you're a judo guy, well, you know, once you close that distance, oh man, it's, it's, uh, it's open season. You can pretty much do anything you want because if you're fighting a guy that's not a judoka, oh my God, like he'll have no idea what hit him. So you can just do your... Uh, do whatever you want, you know, and a very good technique is uh, Osoto. Osoto is a, 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 a crazy, crazy technique because the thing is, when you Osoto someone, right, I mean, that's concussion right there. That's like people get concussed in competition with mats and a, a floating floor underneath and, and a mat on top and mats, tatamis on top of that to absorb the shock and people still get concussed. So imagine you osoto somebody, and you see, when we when we osoto somebody, right? When you throw somebody in judo, you hold on to the sleeve, you pull the sleeve back so that he lands on the side. Like you're holding his arm here, and he lands like this. Because if you don't hold on to his arm, right? And, and of course, in competition, it's different because then you don't care. But when you're practicing randori, if you don't hold on to your arm and you just slam him straight, and he just lands like this, I mean, that's two shoulders on the ground. The head bounces up man like your 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 partner's getting hurt so i mean for example if i was going to how do you say it? um 
throw somebody that way, right? Like I do a no soto on them. So a no soto is a, a big outer uh, trip, right? So you're moving forward and you're sweep, you're kicking his leg out from underneath and then you're slamming him to the ground. So I won't even hold on to, to the arm anymore. At that point, I would just put all my weight and push down to make him come down square. But that's really dangerous, guys, because you, you, uh, you can literally kill somebody with that. You know, I mean, it's concrete. People get concussed on tatami. So imagine you do that hard. Okay. And oh, another thing is that in judo, when you look at the competitions, they throw, but they, they just roll with the guy because they're really trying to get the guy's shoulders to, you know, like touch either one shot or at least one and then two and then boom, they, they, they score their epon, which is essentially a knockout and they're done. You know, they won. But you might not want to do that in, um, in how do you say, in, in the streets because you don't want to be rolling around on the floor. So you actually just want to throw the guy and still be standing. So you see, that's, that's key too. And here's the thing, the way you practice, okay, is going to be the way you execute. Like uh, it, practice makes permanent, that's the thing, right? So competition is one thing, but when you train sport, you still have to think street. I've already said this in another video, but it's an important point to, to reiterate, right? To, to, to remind ourselves. So even though you're training for sport, it's okay. You could do like stuff that you could get away with, right? Like rolling on the ground and uh, you know, like uh what else well you guys know what i mean right more or less sorry i had uh, i was drinking wine last night when i was making videos and i was having so much fun making the videos and answering comments that i'm a little bit hungover today but uh yeah so i'm a little bit slow it's not firing uh on all cylinders you know but it's not too bad i feel okay so you'd have to adapt that so when you so you train you train your sport but you also have to keep in mind that okay well for self defense uh, self-defense purposes, I would have to adapt this and that because there's certain things that it's just common sense. You think about it enough, right? Uh, you take it, not even enough, like you just have to like, just just ask yourself, hmm, would this be practical on the street? And you already know your answer, right? If you're practicing the sport, you already know that, okay, you don't want to be throwing a guy and rolling with him. You know, you want to throw him and he's down and you're still standing so you can see what else is coming or so that, you know, like you stay on top. You don't want to roll and then just get up and you know, that's it. So there's a lot of adaptation to be made, right? In any um, combat sport slash martial art. Okay, and um, yeah, that's it. So even in, in, in any sport, really, even in boxing, you have to, um, well, boxing's pretty good though, you know, but you not, you might not want to, for example, uh, head, you know, bob and weave too much because then what happens is that you can get a knee in the face or kick, you know, so like, that's why, I always feel that you should be, you should you should practice a little bit of everything, but you should have a main focus. Unless you have a lot of time on your hands, uh, then the, the, that's great, and that's actually one of my goals to get this channel off the ground and eventually be able to spend my time training and making videos and talking about it and competing, of course, because you know competition is uh, is super fun for me, and for me to do that, I have to stay fit. Right? I have to stay functional. My mobility has to there. I have to take care of my recovery. I got to lift a lot of weights because I have injuries that are essentially never going to go away. Uh, but, you know, I could, um, I, could, I could balance things out. Relative balance, okay? Because you'll never be at 100%. I mean, when you go high level and you compete, or, you know, or if you're trying to go high level and compete, and, and, and man, you're going to, injuries is part of the game, unfortunately. But you just have to be smart about it and recover uh really like focus a lot on your recovery and all that right um so that's it that would be my main thing is to train all over the place catch wrestling uh sumo wrestling it doesn't matter I touch on everything touch on everything. it makes you eat and when you do when you do multiple arts right it helps with movement patterns and creativity and that will actually make you better at your sport right your martial arts your martial art Right? Whether, whether you do Krav Maga or you do boxing or you do Thai boxing, the more patterns you understand, movement patterns, okay, the, the more you, you, you can find solutions to it, right? And you know you can see it coming more because what gets you is when you don't see uh, it coming. So imagine right now I get into a street altercation, right? And uh, some guy pushes me, okay, boom, you know, like uh, we start punching and stuff like that. Like once we clinch, this guy, all he's thinking about is just, Keep on trying to hit me, but woof, I do a, a one of my one of my specialties is um, is actually a, a, a right, 
at Aigoshi. So uh, I, I can't demonstrate it here, but essentially I grabbed the guy and then I put my leg across uh, his leg and you know, essentially trip him and throw him at the same time. So, I mean, I can pull that shit off like that. And if the guy uh, doesn't see it coming, I mean, it's going to be so easy for me. And man, he's going to do something crazy. Like he's going to either land on his head or stick his arm out. And that arm is going to be broken. I'm telling you. But uh, all that to say that I don't condone fighting in the streets, right? Because uh, of all the um, uh, the dangers to yourself and even to the guy that you're, you're, you're whooping. You know, so don't do that. Don't fight, guys. Get, get it out. Get it out of your system uh, inside, like, in competition, in class, you know, with partners and stuff like that. Of course, keep your partner safe. Don't do nothing crazy. But all this is to say that you have to take the uh, time to think about it. So you train sport, think street, you'll be okay. And of course, touch on more martial arts so that you, you're well-rounded, you're complete. You're able to deal with different scenarios, right? Like, uh, because, oh, I'll tell you one last funny story, right? Okay, so get this. I have a friend, also a judoka. 25, 30 years of experience, super high level, you know? And then at one point we were walking out of a bar, okay? And uh, we were three of us, you know? There was me, there was that, my buddy there, and it was two other buddies, you know? We're all, we're all the judo crew. And then it was, some, and we were drunk, and then, uh, well, we, and then we were just talking really loud, you know? But we're on the street, we weren't bothering anybody. And then the, there's this, there's this guy, this other drunk. <laughs> uh, yeah, drunks congregate, huh? They seem to. So then what he did was like, he started telling us to shut the, shut the fuck up, you know? And then we're looking at him like, what the fuck? And then, then, then my buddy started screaming at him like the one with like uh, the super high level one in judo. And, um, you know, like, oh, blah, 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 blah. And after that, like uh, my other, another buddy, he's like, okay, you got, you want to go? You want to go? Yeah, but well, you guys are free. Yeah, yeah, you know, you're, you think you're tough and all that, but you know, it's because you're free. So then my buddy's like, okay. You, who do you want? Who do you want? You want this guy, like the, the Chinese guy, the the big the big monster. You want me or you want the, the other guy? So the guy said, and he pointed to my buddy, right? So then, get this. So then, she's like, okay, you two fight. We'll stay out of it. Come on, go, go. So he gave them space, and this was right on the goddamn sidewalk, man. So, <laughs> so we're like, yeah. Let's see what happens. So we all stand back, me and the two other guys, and then we have our friend there that's like, oh shit, okay, well fuck it. And he, he was the one, he was the one doing most of the screaming anyway. So to 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 this to this bum. So um and guess what 25, 30 years of high level judo translated to in this fight? Leg kicks. That's all my buddy did. Leg kick the shit out of him right into the street and the guy ran away you know and that was hilarious why because my friend just recently started uh doing uh, muay thai right and then instinctively like if it would have gone to a clinch right then it would have been over really quick it would have been a fro and it would have been done right but his natural instinct was to kick the guy's legs because he was training in muay thai right it's a much safer alternative. And then I asked him later on, like, hey, what's up with that, man? 25, 30 years of judo, you didn't even do nothing. You just free to leg kick the shit out of him. And he's like, well, yeah, man, because listen, even if I do judo and all that, I mean, like, I got to keep my distance. I don't know if the guy has a knife and this and that. And I don't want to get knocked out just running in like a moron, right? So that's true. So that's why even if you practice uh, one sport, you're, it's your specialty. You have to train the sport, think street, and you have to learn other stuff too to complete it off for self-defense purposes, right? If You have to keep that in mind because just because if you do judo and that's all you do, right? Then how are you going to know how to close the distance? How, you don't understand the dangers and all that. So what, you're just going to walk up to the guy and then get, get punched and you're going to get knocked out, right? So there you go. Everything has to be adapted. Uh, that's it for this video. I'm running out of things to say. My brain isn't working. Sorry about that, guys. But, uh, you know, hey, I'm not perfect, right? So like, comment, subscribe below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know what you think, right? Um, and what's your experience with this? How have you guys adapted uh, what you're doing and so on? And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one, man. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Peace.